ויטמין E זה a vitamin, the name says that, which uh, until now, until recently, had uh, no mechanical uh, molecular function. Discovered in 1922, and then in 30 years later, 44 years later, was found it had antioxidant properties. Before it was uh, a nutrient needed uh, for chicken growth, and then it was discovered that uh, it prevented uh, uh, radicals to produce damage to tissues, and therefore this uh, idea of vitamin E being an antioxidant became very popular. It's a compound that uh, rather simple, present in nature, and if you don't uh, eat it with our diet, we have a disease which is called ataxia, means uh, lack of uh, movement coordination. If we have it, no problem. So the question is uh, for us scientists is to find out why. Why a molecule prevents uh, a disease. So the idea that uh, vitamin E was a, an antioxidant thought that, yeah, good. Maybe it was uh, the mechanism by which would prevent uh, the disease of the brain following these uh, uh, difficulties in movement called ataxia. It came in a second moment. Also, the idea that uh, being an antioxidant could have uh, many other properties. Why? Because people discovered the radicals, the free radicals. Free radicals being the naughty guys, those who produce damage, and then uh, an antioxidant would eliminate the naughty guys, the radicals, and produce benefits. So the bad molecules, uh, the bad radicals, uh, would damage uh, tissues like aorta, producing atherosclerosis, or uh, brain, producing neurodegenerative disease, or uh, in general, tissues producing cancer. So the paradigm came about that uh, vitamin E, being an antioxidant, could protect against all these diseases. And some initial studies uh, had indicated this was somewhat the case. NIH, the National Health Institutes in the United States, provided millions of dollars to prove this concept. Now, going from uh, an initial study or some initial studies, especially epidemiological, where a large number of people were uh, studied in terms of what they eat, how much vitamin E eat, and how much they develop disease, then they started to look into, for instance, uh, uh, atherosclerosis. Thousands of people were studied given vitamin E or control groups uh, without treatment. The result was zero, no effect. Another important study was made indicating that uh, this vitamin E uh, could uh, be important in prevent, especially cancer, prostate cancer. And then NIH made another big uh, study with a lot of money called Select Selenium and Vitamin E study, and they found out that instead of protecting against prostate cancer, vitamin E actually was producing in high doses uh, an excess prostate cancer. And I could mention many other diseases which uh, have been uh, tried to be cured by vitamin E, such as macular degeneration, such as uh, uh, neurodegenerative diseases, Alzheimer's disease, and all of them were negative. So essentially now we are left with a vitamin, with a molecule, which is not good for all kinds of disease, but only two situations are cured. 
One is called NASH, N-A-S-H, which is uh, an accumulation of fat in the liver. Non, not due to alcoholic, uh, excess alcoholic uh, introduction in, in, in the body. And the other one is this uh, neurodegenerative disease due to absence uh, of vitamin E. So based on this, uh, now studies are needed to understand uh, for these very two situations, uh, what is the mechanism by which this vitamin works? Why we need to take it in moderate doses, not so much to create uh, excess uh, damage, but also some must be taken. So essentially, the idea that it was an antioxidant seemed not to be sufficient to justify the lack of results that we have been observing. So our group already, maybe 20 years ago, came about with the idea that vitamin E could do other things. Uh, for instance, uh, regulate gene expression. And uh, we did a lot of studies, and we did show, in fact, uh, that vitamin D, vitamin E, uniquely regulates uh, the expression of genes. Uh, and this is specific for different tissues. In brain, some genes. In uh, monocytes, neutrophils, uh, some other genes. Uh, in muscles, some other genes. So there is uh, a target effect of this molecule. In particular, we have studied the effect on two types of tissues. One is uh, in the uh, lipid tissue, adipose tissue, and the other is in the immune system. In the immune system, using uh, feeding uh, mice with uh, high dosage or low dosage of vitamin E, we found out that uh, vitamin E was uh, stimulating all the genes needed to improve the immune response. So a strong immune stimulating response. In terms of adipose tissue, we realize that uh, vitamin E induces uh, in, in uh, activation of all the pathways which bring about uh, lipid elimination, which means uh, uh, lipid oxidation, hydrolysis of triglycerides, and so on. So to summarize uh, these recent studies, we have uh, realized that now vitamin E has, two has one very specific function, that is that of being a gene regulator. And this can be in different tissues, uh, uh, different, stimulating immune response, and uh, in lipid, uh, creating a breakdown of lipid which could be a very important uh, issue in terms of one of the most important uh, population diseases today that called obesity. And in fact, now we are going to study how we can understand these properties of vitamin E in terms of uh, are the people that are obese, do they have enough of vitamin E or of some compound which is called vitamin E phosphate, which is even more potent and which is made in our organism, or perhaps uh, the problem of these people is that they do not have enough the capacity of producing this uh, vitamin E phosphate, which is the one which mostly produces uh, fat elimination. And at the same time, we have to study how we can boost the immune system by using appropriate conditions for vitamin E, and we know that boosting immune system will uh, be important to produce uh, inhibition of cancer growth, inhibition of uh, uh, inflammatory disease, and many other situations which are uh, very damaging for the organisms. This is actually our plan for the future.